Lake Leelanau has been in the news a lot lately as experts and volunteers engage in an expensive battle against infestations of an invasive aquatic plant, the Eurasian water milfoil. According to Tom Hyatt, this may be a fight for the lake itself. A key problem is that each fragment of Eurasian water milfoil that is broken off uh, by wind or by boat propellers uh, can drift around the lake and start a new plant. The weed has taken over a number of other lakes, not only in Michigan, but across the northern United States. And that's why scientists all across the country are trying to figure out how best to control it. It truly is probably the most serious threat to Lake Leelanau that the lake has ever faced. Here's Lake Association biologist Brian Price. Two years ago, we learned the dimension of the problem on this lake because we were able to find and map most of all of the larger beds of Eurasian water milfoil, but we didn't know what to do about it. We were still understanding the dimensions of what we were gonna be working on. The Lake Association partnered with the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians to investigate various ways of controlling Eurasian water milfoil without using chemicals. Their methods have included the use of lake bottom barriers to smother the infestations, including the first use of biodegradable burlap in northern Michigan. We adapted uh, Great Lakes commercial fishing techniques to be able to deploy larger barriers more efficiently, and we ended up doing that on these large beds of uh, Eurasian water milfoil in the summer of 2020. And the experiment continues because it was kind of unknown in the northern Michigan lakes how long it would take, especially the burlap, to break down. And then as the burlap is breaking down, what would come back in and what plants would naturally repopulate and at what speed Burlap barriers are just a part of the multi-pronged effort to reduce and control Eurasian water milfoil in Lake Leelanau. We only use the barriers over sites that are almost pure Eurasian water milfoil and have a lot of size and density to them. So we carefully map those sites and that's the uh, most sort of extreme treatment that we uh, deploy. But on smaller sites or sites that are mixed, you know, with milfoil along with lots of native species of plants, then we'll go in and we'll either send the diver assisted suction harvesting boat, the dash boat, which uses a big suction hose. And it, the divers still pull the plant by hand. They select the milfoil plant that they're targeting, but feed it up into a tube, which takes it to the boat and efficiently delivers that stuff. In a normal day, they'll pull three, four, five hundred pounds of Eurasian water milfoil that way. Then on sites that are small or scattered, you know, there's a strand of milfoil here and another one there, we will go out and just send a diver, either with scuba gear or with uh, surface supplied air, and the diver will pull those strands and put them in a mesh bag take them back to the boat. And actually, that's by far the most efficient way to get the really small sites. And it's important to get those, especially when they are outside of sort of the containment area. I am the scuba diver working on helping to monitor and control the infestations and spread of the Eurasian water milfoil. I was doing a lot of monitoring of what was going on in the lake bottom barriers that we've put in. And then in addition, helping to hand pull as, as a glorified underwater gardener, the, the smaller infestations that, that one diver could handle. Eurasian water milfoil is a thin and spindly plant. For those of us who might not have ever been underwater, I compare it to maybe a bamboo forest. So imagine, you know, how bamboo also is a great um, competitor. So it comes in and then it, it all just sticks together and creates these big, dense forests. That's kind of what Eurasian water milk oil is like underwater. 
To fund and support their small army of volunteers and professionals, the Grand Traverse Band and Lake Association have been raising money through grants and contributions, spending over $150,000 in the first year of this long-term effort. Carol Ann Sondrager is the Natural Resources Department Director for the Grand Traverse Band. This is a pretty significant body of water to our tribe, to our culture, and it's really our jobs as stewards of the environment, stewards of the air, the water, the land, to make sure that this resource is taken care of properly so that way we could use it in the way that it was intended for us to be using it. Biologist Dan Mays leads the Eurasian water milfoil control effort at Lake Leelanoff for the Grand Traverse Band. So last year was a multi-pronged approach barriers, dash divers, scuba divers, coupled with monitoring. And this year, we're in incorporating restoration work. In those areas where we're treating or controlling the milfoil with burlap, we're um, restoring these, those areas. And what I mean by that is aquatic plant restoration. We're stamping out the milfoil. And one of the most common approaches for Re-establishing vegetation is through the uh, formation of founder colonies. So these founder colonies, plantings will spread and eventually fill in a lake, a reservoir, uh, areas where restoration work's going on. On Lake Leelanau, where we're putting these burlap barriers down, there's obviously founder colonies all around the burlap barriers, but we want to expedite the recovery of the plants through planting native plants within the burlap. A new advisor for Lake Leelanau in the restoration of native vegetation is the highly respected aquatic botanist, Dr. Don Less. Less has researched the way milfoil grows and creates problems and how best to restore native aquatic plants. And so we, we did experiments uh, with different techniques. We came up with this way that you take a stem, uh, and you, you trim it off, you get a little pebble, a stone, take a cheesecloth bag, we took these little tiny nylon cords that we would just just snugly tighten the, the bag so it wouldn't pull off. And you leave a little piece of leaf or something just so it can't pull it off of there. And they'll root and grow right through those bags. You come back in a month or so, you can't find any trace of the bag. The bag's completely gone. Those plants are firmly rooted in the, in the sediments. Our goal is to get this milfoil under control to the point where we can manage it at an easier uh, pace than what we've been doing with the burlap barriers and the dash divers and uh, the, the scuba divers that are hand pulling the weed. We, the burlap barrier was our, our first offense against the milfoil. We don't believe we're, we'll ever fully eradicate it, but we can get it to a point where we can much more easily control um, any stands that may pop up. Even as the largest infestations in Lake Leelano are being dealt with, the search for Eurasian water milfoil must continue each year. Small patches of this invader can too easily grow into lake-wide disruptors. That is Eurasian water milfoil from a place that we had not found it before. <laughs>